you're thinking about a public school, what have you learned so far about how you work with the people in power to turn around their assumptions? I mean, because as you describe okay. these beautiful possibilities, you can imagine somebody thinking, well, we can just go down to Carl's and get the bread and, you know, cheese that we need to make the sandwiches. So how do you, how have you been successful already in beginning to turn people around to this revolution, really, revolutionary way of thinking about you know, We've eating. had a, a really independently financed and run project in a public school in Berkeley um, for the last 12 years. And we've been working with 1,000 kids at that school uh, wi with the idea of weaving food into the curriculum of the whole school. So the kids uh, in a math class come out in the garden and they're measuring the beds. If they have a drama class, they might be in the kitchen doing improvisational cooking. They might be, you know, in a history class and they're studying the food of Egypt and we're cooking it in the kitchen. But this is not, it's not just trying to change the food in the cafeteria and giving it an upgrade. It's talking about a whole program in, if you will, eco-gastronomy, so that you're, I, I know I'm not supposed to use that word, it sounds a little too gastric, <laughs> so, uh, but it's, in fact, it's what it is, it's, it's an interactive education where the kids use the lab of the garden and the kitchen to um, really become engaged in the subject. And it turns out when they're in the garden kind of doing the, uh, the, the measuring of the beds, they're learning how to plant the seeds, they're learning about compost, they're learning about uh, uh, biodiversity, they're just absorbing that osmosis. But th this school project didn't begin for three years because we had to plant the ideas into the minds of the teachers who were teaching there. The fortunately, they had an enlightened principal. And fortunately, the Chez Foundation was um, started and we gathered together friends and philanthropists who were willing to take a risk. And we bought teachers who breathed life into this idea. But I love if, if you would tell about when you first started talking to Neil, the principal, about that blacktop schoolyard and how, try to tell us how you actually t got him to let you turn that broken down acre into a beautiful garden that an English gardener you had come and fixed, we right? We did, we did. Well, um, uh, Neil was a little bit desperate uh, for help at the school. I mean, uh, uh, all the schools in California are falling apart. We're number 47 in the nation in terms of academic excellence. And we haven't, uh, you know, when we first went to King's School, they didn't even have any hot water in, in the restaurants. Now, this is a middle school in Berkeley with 1,000 kids, and there's no hot water. There aren't even enough chairs in the high school for all the kids. So um, and, and Neil was uh, sort of reaching out to the community, and he thought I had something to do with gardening, and he thought that I might want to beautify his school. Uh, so he called me up, and I went over there, and um, I looked around, and it was a, a school that was built on 17 acres in 1921. And... Um, it had a lot of space, and I just started fantasizing and say, oh, uh, you know, we could plant a garden here. Yes, we could do that, but oh, you have potential for, for a kitchen, and uh, uh, maybe we could do the whole cycle. You could have a garden and a kitchen and a, and a big table where all the kids could sit down for lunch, and then the compost could go back and, you know, into the garden, and the whole cycle of life, and he said, uh, you know, hold on. <laughs> you know, I didn't sign up for this. Thing, so I just thought we'd plant a few trees out in front. And, <laughs> and, um, and then he called me back six months later, and he said, I'm ready. Uh, we're, we're ready. We're going to do this. We want to do it. He said, don't talk about 
that every child is going to eat at school yet. So just wait for that for a little bit until we <laughs> get them used to it. And so we used to have our first meetings at Japanese for the math teachers. And to feed people is the greatest way to influence them. And I really do believe that, that while you're talking the talk, you need to be feeding them the food. <laughs> and uh, they digest it differently. And they want to come back. And they want to hear again. And the math teacher still calls, well, when can we come for our annual dinner? <laughs> yeah, no. And everybody, uh, and it took a while before we could put the first seeds in the ground. But this wonderful English um, gardener, was the first person we hired. And he was very, very careful um, to make this inclusive and to engage the kids in a way that would be me really meaningful for them. And maybe the story that, uh, that's most revealing, and I'm, uh, I, I wanted to show you a little, we're, pu we're doing a book about the Edible Schoolyard that's coming out in September, but the story, um, was about the summer school class that David um, got going, and he invited the kids that were the most difficult in the school to come for the summer session because he thought if they could sort of be the creators of this garden, that everyone else would come along. And I was to provide the lunch for the kids the first day. So... I went and I thought it had to be something familiar and I went down to my friend who had a uh, you know, Mexican restaurant. I was going to have chicken tacos and beans and of course I got those peaches, a dollar a piece, uh, and brought the peaches and I had the most simple salad, you know, romaine lettuce and something simple and I brought it there. They just took one look, no way. <laughs> it didn't look like Taco Bell. They didn't want the, the, the uh, tortilla that was wrapped like that. They didn't have beans in the tortilla. They didn't want that. They never touched the salad. And they wouldn't eat the peach because it was fuzzy on the outside. And I said, but I'll peel it. <laughs> you know, I'll peel the peach. They didn't want me to peel the peach. They didn't want the peach. And it was really a wake-up call. And I thought, you know, this is, it, it's not going to work. You know, something's really wrong. And then I went back to thinking about when I taught kids, preschool kids at Montessori. And I thought, well, you know, th everything needs to be separated. No mixing up of foods. Everything, and that they need to be able to choose for themselves. And they need to be involved in this in a different way, which is what I ended up doing. But what really happened was that David took them up to the park, and he gave them big hatchets and saws, and they got to cutting down branches that they were going to build uh, to make the beds uh, in the garden. And once they got invested in this kind of dramatic way, almost dangerous way, they had a fire in the fireplace, and they were cooking their, uh, you know, their, their food themselves, then they opened up. Then they were ready. 